Hold it, hold it, man. Hold it. What, wait. What the fuck is this kid doing in here? Get the hell out of here before I kick your little ass. <laughs> So, Jaime Munguia gets his shot at arguably the best fighter of this generation when he steps in the ring for Undisputed at Super Middleweight versus Saul Canelo Alvarez. Now, this ain't going to be no cakewalk, excuse me, by any way, shape, form, and fashion. Uh, in my opinion... Jaime Munguia has what it takes to beat Saul Canelo Alvarez, especially when you see him end John Ryder and you see Canelo Alvarez, although he demolished John Ryder. John Ryder was a bloody mess in that fight. Um, he couldn't get the clothes. He couldn't get the clothes. So if, if that's the measuring stick, then we're in for a crazy fight. Now, the, the things that really have me up in the air about Munguia's chances of beating Canelo Alvarez is his power and his ability to absorb the power of Canelo Alvarez. Like, this fight comes down to power for me. It's not speed. It's not heart. Um, it's mainly his chin. And could he, uh, with his fist, force Canelo Alvarez to back up? Right, because once Canelo gets going, bruh, he gets going, bruh. And, and Lord forbid Canelo finds your targets. Right, he finds those target areas like what he did with Caleb Plant, man. He just cut the win out, out of Caleb Plant. You, you think about Colin Smith, um, he, he swelled his arm up, right? Like the worst freaking arm punches you could possibly get, bruh. This, his arm had a lot of fluid in it uh, towards the end of that fight, right? So it's like once Canelo figure out where to go, yeah, man, that's a difficult task of stopping this guy. So, right now, man, this is just right now, bro. I'm up in the air. I do think that Jaime Munguia does have a real shot at beating Canelo, but I don't know, bro. I don't know. Maybe maybe I could predict something by the end of the video. Let, let, let's just move forward. So, here's what's at stake here, all right? Now, you have uh, Undisputed, which is technically at stake, right? It's, it's, it's four belts at 168 pounds, which basically... Um, Jaime Munguia becomes a legend overnight, right? Overnight, bro. Beating Canelo Alvarez at 168 pounds, it's a little bit more prestigious than beating him at 175 pounds, which is what happened with Dimitri Bivar. Not to mention Bivar didn't even have another opponent to put into the ring that could even measure up to Canelo Alvarez after he seen Canelo Alvarez. And now he's having his second fight, which will be the uh, uh, Art to Better Beef. Right, and that's a fight that bro he might not win. Although all of you guys seem to think that he will win, I'll do a video on that uh soon. Saying that to say, bro, um Mungil also has something to lose here, bro. He does. Um he has the idea of losing that O. Now him losing this O, right? For most guys it'd be like 30 and 0. For most guys it'd be like 20 and 0. Like for Devin Hayne, I think it was 30 and 0. Right, he lost that O at 30 fights. For Mungia, I think he's 43 and O, bruh. 43 and O, which puts him at seven fights from tying Floyd Mayweather's record and eight fights from dethroning Floyd Mayweather Jr., right? That's, this is crazy. I'm saying this, but it's the facts, bruh. Mungia is only eight fights away from dethroning Mayweather, bro, which is doing something that Oscar De La Hoya would celebrate Jaime Munguia until he leaves this planet, bro, because we know that uh, uh, Mayweather is, is De La Hoya's biggest rival to this day, right? So it's a scenario where, yeah, him and Canelo don't like each other either, so it would be uh, a, a great deal to see Munguia beat Canelo, but it would be an even better deal to see Munguia move forward past this and, and, and go on to get that Mayweather record and, and, and dethrone both, right? Canelo and Mayweather with one guy, right? So I'm assuming that this would be um, just what the doctor ordered for Munguia to get this W. But if he lose, bro, man, he could lose so much, bro. He could lose so much. Um, he could dethrone Canelo by beating him, right, and become uh, Mexico's best fighter, 
right? So it, it would be a proverbial passing of the torch if he were to win, bruh. But if he loses, bruh, long live Canelo Alvarez because there is nobody within a, a, a 10 fight radius of that record anymore. Nobody that's worthy. Nobody. I mean, you could say David Benavidez, but, but I mean, that's. That's not Mexico, right? That's America. Um, and Benavidez, you can he have he has the 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 bloodline, but he's not from Mexico, right? So you have Guadalajara and Tijuana in this fight. That's, that's that's basically what I'm trying to get at, right? So saying that to say, yeah, that's not that's nobody else, right? There's nobody else that can even come close to um, pretty much dethroning uh, Canelo Alvarez. But I also think that due to how Munguia performs. On the night versus Canelo Alvarez, bro, he still might go down as a Mexican legend. Just depends on him not quitting, him having enough heart, him continuing to bring the fight, win, lose, or draw. If he gets knocked out, he got to get knocked out. Like, he can't quit. Like, stuff like that will really, uh, you know, stand out in the eyes of the Mexican onlookers. And maybe, bro, I don't know, but he might can pull this off. Like, he, like, I, I'm, I'm trying to just, like, Weigh the options in my head, bro. He might could pull this off, bro, but it's going to be difficult to deal with that power of Canelo, bro. That's going to be difficult, bro, for any man uh, in, in the business, but definitely for Jaime Munguia, somebody who's coming up from 160 pounds. But, bro, he did John Ryder something crazy. Now, from what I'm hearing, uh, since I still have a little bit more time, from what I'm hearing is um, it looks like Edgar Belanga will get the W uh, of this particular fight. And see Canelo if Canelo gets past Moongill, then Berlanga gets his shot at Canelo Alvarez next. I seen a video where Berlanga was in the club and the DJ introduced Berlanga. And when he introduced Berlanga, he also said that uh, he will be seeing Canelo Alvarez in September. Now that could be wishful thinking because you still got to get past Jaime Moongill, which should have been the fight, right? Moongill versus Berlanga was supposed to be the fight. Berlanga decided to opt out of that fight. It wasn't Munguia's side that decided to stop that one. Um, it was Berlanga and team, and now he gets a shot at Canelo Alvarez. I mean, I guess that's cool. I guess that's cool. Uh, it, it was looking like if it wouldn't have been Berlanga, it maybe would have been David Morrell, but Morrell seems to really want to chase David Benavidez around, so he's moving up to 175 as well. So it opens up the doors, right? Um, you get Munguia this fight. You get Berlanga next fight. So you will have Mexico versus Mexico this fight. And then you'll get Mexico versus Puerto Rico in the next fight. So it's two legitimate fights for Canelo to, um, you know, do his victory lap on as far as the sport of boxing is concerned. I don't think Canelo leaves anytime soon. It's looking like he have a full head of steam to stick around for maybe a good seven to ten more fights. I don't know. But I don't think he's about to leave anytime soon. So it is what it is, man. This is Fist Factory. I'm your host, Neff. And I'm getting ready to sign out, man. Just got to ask you guys, before we go, man, we got less than, what, four days till fight day. Who you guys got winning, man? Can Moon Gill pull this thing off? <sighs> Bro, if I just had to, like, predict this before we go, I don't know, bro. I'm... I just might say Canelo got this in the bag, but, bro, I could be wrong, bro. I could be wrong. I think Canelo got this in the bag. I think it's going to be a tough few rounds, especially those earlier rounds, um, until Moon Gill starts feeling Canelo's power. Because, see, the thing about Canelo is he starts off pretty traditional, but as the fight goes on, it seems like his power stays. Like, it, it don't leave. Even when Canelo's tired... His power don't leave, right? It just don't go nowhere, bro. It's going. He's gonna hit you with the same um, power in the first round as he did does in the twelfth, right? So I think that's going to be a problem. I think Moon Gil can be wild at times um, and let his power just go. And uh, I don't know how how he would really perform in deep waters when his body is sore. Like you dig what I'm saying? When his body is hurting. He's fighting possibly the best fighter uh, of this past generation. In most people's eyes, he is the best fighter of the past generation or this current generation. So, I don't know. I just think that, bro, Canelo is miles ahead when it comes to this particular fight. When it comes to Berlanga fight, I, I, there's no question. I got Canelo in that fight. Um, but in this one, it's kind of like, I don't know, because I seen Munguil, um, he got the he got the height advantage. And he, he got, to a certain degree, a good deal of power. 
But if he goes into the ring overly respecting Canelo Alvarez, if he's starstruck, if he's sitting there, I can't believe I'm in the ring with Canelo, and he he's like living the dream at that particular point in time, then Canelo going to put him to sleep. And that's what I really have to bank on. It's, it's more so um, the Floyd Mayweather uh, code to a certain degree, not to add Floyd to this, but it's kind of it, right? Most guys lost to Floyd Mayweather before they even stepped into the ring because they was just amazed that they was fighting Floyd. Not to mention, he brings this great deal of talent to the ring and this great deal of speed uh, and, and skill to the ring, right? But also because he's just Floyd. He, he's the highest paid boxer to ever live. I be watching him on TV and now I get to fight him type deal. So you got to think about that as well for Canelo Alvarez. Being a Mexican uh, born fighter, uh, to have have been seeing Canelo's fights pretty much a whole uh, childhood, uh, and, and now I'm being able to step into the ring with him and, and duke it out with him. Like you know, I, I hopefully he'll save his respect for the tail end of the fight once the fight is over, once he's walking out of the ring with Canelo's belts. But you kind of can't bank your your money on that. Like you see what I'm saying? Whoever bet Moon Gill, be prepared for a great night. A pay if he could get past the the celebrity and then the skill set of Canelo Alvarez on fight night. But if you ask me, bro, I don't, maybe he just not ripe enough yet to get past Canelo. But I'm definitely going to be in front of a TV screen to see if Moongil can pull it off, and hopefully you guys will too. This is Fist Factory. I'm your host Neff, and I'm signing night. Y'all take it easy, bro. Peace. For all night champions for members only. Party chat debate for a shot at the community board champion. But remember, it's a fight, so don't get knocked out and lose your place in the ranks. Or if you're just here to be a part of the spectacle, that's cool too. Sign up for the first tier to get front row seats to each event and get exclusive content not seen on YouTube. No mods here, but don't get kicked out. See rule books for more details. Oh yeah, ladies and the legends are included if you want to spectate or go for some gold. For all night champions, sign up now.